Growing up, definitely my mom. I was dressing like her. She was my style icon when I was in high school. I do get that comment a lot, but I really still feel like I'm such a baby. I think a common misconception is that I'm just like 100% reserved all the time. I don't know, what do you think? Hi everyone, it's me again. I'm back for another episode. And today what we're actually going to be doing is I will be doing my simple everyday makeup routine. So just my go-to look for anything. So whenever I'm doing my own makeup, I like to keep it very simple, very light. And while I'm doing that, I will be answering the questions that you guys sent me on Instagram a few days ago. So let's get started. How am I? I think I'm doing great. I feel like in the past couple of months, I've done a lot of work for my music that I've been itching to do for the past year. I'm just so happy and excited to finally be able to start with the rolling out of all these projects that I've been working on the past few months. So yeah, I'm great. And I'm very excited for you guys to see what we've been working on. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I already washed my face, did my whole skincare routine. I put moisturizer on and now I'm putting on my primer, so. Put that all over my face. So my favorite song at the moment is called Eternal Light by Free Nationals and Chronix. I think I've got it all over my face. Oh, in the beginning of the pandemic, I tried to play golf. I don't know if that's like interesting to people because I don't think anyone would expect me to try something like that. So I tried to do it for a bit. It's a hobby that I kind of started late last year. I haven't been able to practice anytime recently, but that's a hobby I picked up and would like to pursue again. The next step is I put on my foundation and I put about this much. I put it on my sponge on a damp beauty blender and I just go in. Okay. With school and work, I just do what I'm supposed to be doing at the particular time that I'm at. Well, before when I would go to physical school, if I had to be in class, all I had to do was to be very present in class so that I wasn't missing out on much. So I like to listen to my professors so that I didn't have to do a lot of self-studying. And then on the weekends, I would work, do shows and do stuff like that. I guess it's really all about time management and knowing how to prioritize. So if there's something that I know is very important for work or for school, then maybe I'll skip out on seeing my friends on the weekend, which is just the sacrifice that comes with doing what I'm doing. So it's really about time management and knowing how to prioritize. I get inspired by, of course, my own personal life. I draw inspiration from the things that are happening to me or maybe from the stories that I hear about my friends and the things that are happening to them. So it's a very, you know, drawing inspiration could, I draw it from everything, reading books, watching films, from my life, from other musicians. Um, inspiration really just comes from everywhere. So the next thing that I do is I put concealer under my eyes and then if I want to cover acne scars or whatever, I have a little scarring right now, so I'm gonna cover that. I don't think it's handling bad days, but it's just allowing yourself to have bad days. So usually when I know it's I'm feeling kind of funky, I don't feel so great about myself, what I like to do is have a nice long shower and really exfoliate my body and then after do all these skincare and self-care stuff and then I like to get into the comfiest biggest clothes and lie down and watch shows so usually if you have the luxury of time or if you're having a bad day and you're just at home that's something that you can do you can kind of just practice different self-care habits and then kind of just allow yourself to sulk for a day or two, depends. Have you ever invalidated your feelings just to understand others? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, definitely. I think I used to do that a lot, or I still do that, I tend to do that a lot. I think I carry the weight of other people's feelings more than I do my own, so it's kind of hard because I'm a very sensitive person, so usually it's easy to forget about yourself but i think that's the first step if you already feel like you are neglecting yourself and your own feelings or whatever just do what you have to do and 
that's the first step. And just acknowledging that that's what's happening, that you're not allowing yourself to feel the way that you're supposed to be feeling. I do get that comment a lot, but I really still feel like I'm such a baby. I really am. There's still so much more to learn and it's such an honor for people to look up to me the way that they do because I'm just like all of you, like I'm figuring it out. I'm trying to really learn from the people that I'm so blessed to be around and meet and have the opportunity to know. And I just make the most of it. I think if you really want to be in control of your growth as a person and you want to mature and whatever, you just have to be open to really learning from others and acknowledging that there's something to learn from every single person that you meet. Yes, that's like one of my biggest dreams. Like it's my dream to write a book about, I don't know, I want to write a novel. So yes, writing a book is definitely one of my dreams. So now I'm working on my eyebrows. I kind of just fill in the ends like wherever there's missing hairs or whatever, just to even it, I don't go overboard. I think a common misconception is that I'm just like 100% reserved all the time. I don't know, what do you think? But then I'm actually very goofy and I love to dance and I love to make jokes and I love to make people laugh and I'm very friendly and I'm not always serious. In fact, I am more often goofy than I am serious, I think. That's a side of me that not many people know yet. I don't have like a particular one in mind right now, but what I like to do every time I have a sandwich, whatever sandwich it is, I just love to put chips inside. I don't know, I think people do that already. It's normal, but that's something that I like to do. Growing up, definitely my mom. In high school, I was dressing like her. Very modest, obviously. I would wear a lot of dresses, wear the same pants, like anything she owned, or I would even wear her clothes. She was my style icon when I was in high school. But maybe now, I haven't really been looking for inspiration when it comes to what I wear. I always just think on a regular basis, I wear a lot of athleisure, so I'm not really the best with fashion but also at the end of the day i just like being comfortable and feeling confident in what i'm wearing so whatever it is i wear everything and anything whatever i feel well it's okay to feel like that first and foremost we all feel like that sometimes but something that i always say is it's just about having a plan if there's anything you want to change about yourself or not change if there's anything you want to improve about yourself then the first step is definitely to make a plan. And as you take the steps towards achieving what you want, you'll just start to believe in yourself a little bit more and more. Uh, that everything that happens is meant to happen. I just have faith and trust in that. I know I've mentioned that like so many times. And by the way, I'm putting on my contour, or I'm bronzing up my face rather. I don't know how to contour. Ooh, favorite cuisine? Japanese food. It's just so diverse. I think all my favorite memories as a child was when we used to go on family trips. We were all still really young. Me, Danny, Julia, and Dion. At the time, Erich wasn't even born, but we would always go to theme parks. We really loved going to Hong Kong or Singapore just to go to theme parks, and those were always the best. Like, it was so fun just being together. So growing up, like, my fondest childhood memories definitely has to be traveling with my siblings. Okay, so I did my whole bronzing of the face and then I put a little blush. Now I'm going to put some highlighter, but I'll just use my finger. So what I do is I get my ring finger and I go in in the inner corners of my eyes and I lightly, lightly put it in the inner corners. Well, I have one song that's unreleased, but I really like this link from the song. Okay. I am terrified. Please don't fear my light, because this just might be it. I'm not even sure if those are the lyrics, but they meant a lot to me, whether or not it was right or wrong. So, Anyway, I'm putting highlighter here too. Like I'm putting it on the high points of my face. I love how private you are, but at the same time, not really. How do you know how to protect your skin? Whoa! I think it's just I have a healthy, or maybe, you know, it's something that I'm constantly working on, but I try to 
compartmentalize social media for work and social media as a tool in my personal life. And what I do is usually what you see or like whatever you see online about me are things that reflect my work and everything else like I kind of like protect a little bit more because I don't know I think growing up I have just always been like that I have been the most private amongst my siblings but it's not something that I do on purpose I think just naturally I like to function in the world that way like I want to be able to compartmentalize the different roles that I play in my life so when I use social media I do share private moments but in moderation and then primarily I use social media for work. I started reading as early as like 9, 10 years old and I think I got into it because my mom is also a reader. She used to read a lot of books and I don't know I guess it's just a curiosity of mine like wondering like how come my mom loved reading so much and then I started reading and changed my life. Pause or rewind button in my life? Pause. I wouldn't want to rewind because I think there's something special about experiencing something great and happy in the moment that you experience it in. So maybe pause, to pause during difficult times or to be able to pause and just take a breather and take a step back. Maybe that would be nice. Okay, now I'm going to do my lips. So this is, um, it's like a gloss with a little bit of tint. So it's just my favorite this is what i use all the time okay this is also not a question i just want to say how much you and your music helped me survive difficult days that just warms my heart thank you like genuinely thank you that means a lot to me oh by the way you guys i'm done all i have to do is set my makeup oh whoops i'm not done I'm definitely not done. I like to curl my lashes. That's the last step. I'm gonna curl my lashes and we're done. What's one piece of advice that you think people should stop doing? Maybe the way that people use you only live once. Like when doing something risky. Maybe saying you only live once should make you more careful. Take healthy risks, but not, not too risky. And we're done? I'm done with my makeup? One last question. Okay, one last question. Here we go. How has music impacted my life? Music has changed my life because not only is it like my passion, but writing music and singing is very cathartic for me. It's my way of processing the things that happen in my life, or it's the way that I tell stories and impart what I've learned through the experience I've been through, or it's just really just my form of expression. And I would say it's, um, music is very cathartic for me. So anyway, I had so much fun showing you guys, well, you know, giving you a general idea as to how I do my everyday makeup. And I'm sure you've seen me looking like this before in photos or even in person. Um, it's very simple, very easy to do. But I also hope you guys enjoy hearing the answers that I have for your questions. And I'll see you again. Thank you so much for watching.